One, two, is this on? The physical nature of wrestling means that the action can become all too real. A receipt refers to the vengeance gained by a wrestler after another wrestler has done them wrong. A traditional receipt occurs when a wrestler accidentally cracks his opponent's stiff in the jaw, to which they can expect something hard to come right back. In this video, we look back to these times where specific wrestlers gave out a receipt during their matches. Undertaker would love giving a receipt back with a stiff chair shot. In 1997, as guest referee at SummerSlam, Shawn Michaels would clock the dead man with a chair at the end of the match, where he would reluctantly give Brett the win and he and Taker would enter their own program. However, Michaels realized that the blow was too forceful. <laughs> And to end their Hell in a Cell match, he accepted a chair shot of his own from the dead man as his personal receipt that really rung his bell. In 2005, Randy Orton ended up rocking Taker with the chair, where he mistakenly caught the phenom with the lip of the chair, which ended up causing a huge gash. Undertaker told him backstage that his receipt would be coming. When that chair came down, I caught him with the lip of the chair, and I ripped the skin off of his forehead all the way down to the bridge of his nose, and he was covered in blood. He just looks at me. Don't worry, kid. Your receipt's coming. It wasn't until a few weeks later at Armageddon 2005 where the dead man got his revenge and he delivered a thunderous chair shot to the head of Randy Orton. But he's in trouble! Payback! Oh. During WrestleMania 23, Batista and Undertaker would go at it for the World Heavyweight title. Early on in the match, Batista unknowingly hit Taker with a stiff shot in his ear. Taker wouldn't take too kindly to this and would keep a note of this throughout the match. Later in the contest, he would go to hit Batista with a stiff right hook that got him right on the jaw. Batista fell back against the ropes, looking kind of dazed. The Undertaker, maybe, just maybe that is back tonight. Initially, he thought it was a sip from the veteran, but as he came back to throw the next punch, Taker would be sure to let him know that it was a receipt for breaking his eardrum earlier in the match. Batista would apologize, and they went on to have one of the best matches on the card. In another incident with Taker, Shane McMahon ended up sniffing Taker with a monitor on a Raw before their WrestleMania match that caused him to get busted open. Backstage, Undertaker let Shane know that his receipt was going to come later. I said, I'm sorry, I gave him a hug, and then I closed my eyes, I stick my chin out like this. I'm ready for one. He went... It's all right, it's come like, it'll come later. <laughs> Fast forward to WrestleMania 32, Shane got his comeuppance as Taker would bear paw him with a monitor of his own on the outside of the ring. And bear paws me. Whack! Wide open jaw. Sticking with Shane McMahon, it's well known that his punches can look awful at times. But with the adrenaline pumping, he throws rapid combos. And when he doesn't miss completely, he lands them on his opponent flush in the face. One time he did this in particular was at Survivor Series 2016, where he blasted Chris Jericho clean in the face. The punch didn't look great, but caught Jericho on the nose, who took a powder and kicked the steel steps in an attempt to alleviate his frustrations. Shane was even more clumsy when Jericho re-entered the ring, which justified his response. I jumped up and gave him like a Jean-Claude Van Damme <laughs> double kick. I'm like, calm the fuck down. Sticking now with Y2J, during the Royal Rumble in 2003, Tommy Dreamer would enter the match wielding various weapons. Dreamer would then proceed to catch Chris Jericho with two tough shots from a kendo stick. The first one was hard, but didn't seem to rock Y2J as he asked for another, but the second was brutal. Jericho would then get his receipt back on Dreamer via a trash can lid and then a kendo stick shot of his own, as he then threw the kendo stick down in frustration before eliminating Dreamer with the help of Christian. During a brawl inside a densely filled ring at ECW One Night Stand in 2005, JBL legitimately laid a beating on the Blue Meanie, leaving his face bloodied in the aftermath. Word had gotten out to JBL that in the years prior, the Blue Meanie mentioned he was a bully. This obviously lit a fire in Bradshaw's eyes and when it came time to to brawl at the end of the pay-per-view, JBL took this as an opportunity to pay him back. However, months later in a match where JBL faced off against the Blue Meanie, Meanie picked up the victory via help from Batista, but before the pin, it was the Blue Meanie's partner in crime with the BWO, Stevie Richards, making headlines, delivering one of the hardest to watch chair shots to JBL's head. Oh, what is Stevie Richards? Stevie Richards! It was a shot thrown so hard you could see the pure anger behind it. Rikishi's always been known as a fun-loving, jovial character that never failed to entertain the people. So it was a surprise to fans when he lost his cool whilst wrestling a tag match in the WWF's former developmental territory, HWA, in December 2001. Rikishi wrestled against a team featuring Haku and Russ McCullough. A planned spot was to see Russ hold Rikishi in place for a kick from Haku, only for Rikishi to move, leading to McCullough getting accidentally hit instead. The problem was Rikishi was supposed to move to the left, but ended up moving right 
right instead, meaning Haku's kick hit Rikishi hard in the face. This infuriated Big Kish, who went to the outside, grabbed a fan's chair, and went straight for Makolo. Rikishi rained down chair shot after chair shot, completely bending the chair in half and forcing Makolo to retreat to the back. Rikishi was none too pleased with being potatoed, and there was a further altercation once the wrestlers got to the backstage area. It was there that Rikishi and other Samoan wrestlers threatened to beat up Russ. Makolo had already been told his contract wasn't going to be renewed, and he was allowed out of his deal early, straight after the match. In perhaps one of the most shocking receipts witnessed in a match, Perry Saturn had his way with jobber Mike Bell during a match recorded for WWF Metal in May 2001. Saturn would say that he freaked out after being dropped on his head twice by Bell, and thus began laying into the enhancement talent for real. When Saturn returned to the locker room, he was greeted by Vince McMahon, who wanted an explanation as to what happened out there. Saturn apologized and then checked to see if Bell was okay. Beat the crap up. Yeah. Threw him outside the ring. He landed with, you know, on his head on the concrete floor. And then uh, Perry jacked him up and ran him, in, ran him into the steps back where the back of his head hit the steps. He beat the crap out of him. This likely resulted in him getting his mop gimmick as a punishment shortly after. As we just saw, Perry Saturn could certainly dish out a receipt. But some seven months later, after punishing Mike Bell, Saturn was on hand to deliver more receipts, this time in another physical match versus a local competitor, Brian Gamble, on an episode of WWF Metal in December 2001. The story goes, Gamble claimed they were wrestling in his hometown and had friends and family in the audience. And for that reason, he wanted to get more offense in than a typical jobber would. The match starts off with Gamble performing a hip toss to which Saturn then responds by asking, are you trying to shoot on me? Before giving Gamble a strong slap to the face, Gamble replies with a shove only to get annihilated with a massive spear. But there was still more to come as Saturn also delivered a hard kick to the back. Gamble managed to hit a spinning elbow where he then tried to go for a cover, but Saturn wasn't having any of it. Perry brought Gamble down one more time, allowing Saturn to lock in a submission hold which got the win. The match plays out quite differently to a typical enhancement squash, with the wrestlers being on different pages at various points in the match, as seen from the numerous stiff shots dished out by Saturn. While Saturn took teaching his opponent a lesson to the extreme, Diesel would get his message across at the 1994 Royal Rumble with some good old-fashioned live rounds delivered to the face of Virgil. Diesel would say that Virgil was supposed to come in, take a few hits and quickly get eliminated but instead he stayed in the match despite Diesel telling him he had to go. Virgil then angered Diesel by legit hitting him in the face to which Big Daddy Cool responded with a barrage of stiff elbows before finally dunking Virgil out. Next is the classic tale of revenge although this was just as much real life as it was storyline. On Farouk's first night in the WWF he would attack Ahmed Johnson kicking him in the kidney. Right in my kidney. I mean it felt like a shotgun hit and I was like oh I'll be damned. <laughs> He had no idea anything was wrong until later that night when his breathing began to change, which led him to go into hospital and ended up being out of action for a month with a kidney injury as a direct result of Farouk's stiff boot. Ahmed would say he believed Farouk kicked him so hard on purpose as he felt Farouk was jealous of his success. Farouk later admitted that it was in fact a receipt to teach Ahmed a lesson for being stiff with other wrestlers in the past. But that saga didn't end there as eight months later, Ahmed would finally get his revenge. He got a receipt for it. He got a receipt for it, delivering a stiff spine buster to Farouk in a match, causing Farouk to break a couple ribs. You no, know, I got to the point where I sent him back to the hospital. I gave him a spine buster and, and drove my head in his ribs and broke a couple of the ribs. <laughs> Wrestlers seeing each other for real can lead to the match breaking down. And this is what happened when the great Antonio took on Antonio Inoki in 1977. At first, the great Antonio began to no-sell Inoki's offense. This will have already angered the Japanese legend, but it was some hard clubs to the neck that was the final straw for Inoki, who then proceeded to let rip at the great Antonio with some slaps and diff kicks that ended up drawing blood. <laughs> The great Antonio then laid there busted open and Inoki was mercifully declared the winner as the match was stopped. For our next entry, we go back to Japan in 1990, where a huge inter-promotional match for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship saw All Japan's Stan Hansen challenge New Japan's Big Van Vader in one of wrestling's stiffest ever matches. Even before the match began, Vader suffered a broken nose whilst on the outside after Hansen swung his cowbell at him. He was telling me, he says, you know, you hit the thing, the thing came back broke my nose right off the bat. Once things got underway, the physicality continued with both men hitting each other for real, with Vader in particular landing some stiff shots. Hansen responded with a melee in the corner, where he ended up sticking his thumb into Vader's eye, causing it to pop out, resulting in an insane visual. Vader showed incredible toughness, pushing his eye back into its socket and holding it in place with his eyelid. The match continued, as did the punishment. The two men beat the holy hell out of each other, with the action eventually spilling to the outside. The match ended in a double counter after both men continued brawling in the crowd. All the bones in my face had refused. 
So I mean, my whole, all my cheekbone was broken. All this was broken. My whole nose, nose was crushed. Extensive surgery was required on Vader's face following the match. Sticking with Vader in 1997, Ken Shamrock developed into a good wrestler by the standards of the time. He was notably stiff in the ring and he and Vader would have some brutal matches. However, on one occasion at In Your House, A Cold Day in Hell, he may have gone a bit too far for the big man's liking. Familiar with the work shoot genre only and not the less intensive in-house style, he battered Vader with a series of strikes that didn't look great but seemed really painful. Vader was seen on the outside telling Shamrock to ease up, but Shamrock was was so eager that at one point he left his feet while striking and went on to break the mastodon's nose. Shamrock went and broke my nose. Instead of kicking me here in the cheek, you know, he's leading my cheek in. He was turning my nose, he was reverting back to the chute, and he stuck his knee right at my nose and it, it virtually broke my nose. In response, Vader issued a receipt in the form of a clubbing forearm right in the ear. Vader knocked him clean off his feet. Shamrock actually denied that this was a receipt on Kurt Angle's podcast. Hearing afterwards how people were talking about how Vader laid me out, I'm thinking to myself, what match are they watching? I mean, like, he threw a punch at me, I rolled with the punch, and I went down to sell it. Whether you believe that this was a receipt or not, I'll leave that up to you. As we've seen so far, wrestlers can show their legit frustrations with their opponents in various different ways. And Shawn Michaels demonstrated this at the 1996 SummerSlam. In his match with Vader, Shawn went to the top rope and was to attempt an elbow drop that Vader was supposed to dodge by moving out the way. Vader, however, never moved as Shawn landed on his feet. He then began to visibly berate Vader for forgetting the spot. Never in my life had that happened to me. Everyone forgets spots and even Shawn forgets spots. Well, if you forget something, go and you do something else, then come back to it, right? I mean, it's, it's called wrestling. Brought to tears by HBK, Vader's time got worse as it became clear he was not going to become the company's next monster heel. Instead, at a pay-per-view, Vader was forced to refer to himself as a fat piece of shit by the writers. And even Vince McMahon joined in complaining about his employee's odor during a live AOL chat. Forgetting a spot and getting screamed at mid-match is something Kofi Kingston also experienced when he wrestled John Cena and Randy Orton in a triple threat match on Raw in 2010. Orton was to get the win after hitting Kingston with a punt kick, but Kofi failed to get in position for the move, which led to Orton winning with the RKO instead. Upon delivering the move, Orton would yell stupid at Kofi. Goes for the RKO and connects! Kofi Kingston jaw and face planted! The error is supposedly what ended Kofi's push during this time. However, years later, Kofi would get his own back on Orton, even though this time it was actually scripted. Right. Ultimately, we know the only time almost Public Enemy spent two months in WWE in 1999 after their time in ECW, and their most notable appearance was losing a squash match to the Acolytes. They came in late that day, which in Bradshaw's eyes was a sign of disrespect, and further added to the animosity between the two teams due to Public Enemy's ties with WCW at the time. They then came up to Bradshaw just before he went out, telling him that they no longer wanted to do the spot with the table. This pissed off the Acolytes even more, and Ron Simmons basically said if they don't want to take the table will take the table to them they went on to deliver a brutal beatdown. sometimes it has to get to that you know and it's unfortunate but it happens they're not stopping terry they don't care about the belt wasn't still the end it was real. When the Dudley Boys joined the WWF in 1999, they were immediately paired with the Acolytes. The two teams had numerous very physical encounters. This was done as a way of testing the Dudleys to ensure there was no repeat of what happened with the public enemy. The Dudleys made their presence known during their WWF debut by attacking the Acolytes with 2x4s. Bubba in particular made sure to lay it in, giving Bradshaw two legit smacks one after the other. King the Dudley Boys! Bubba hit me so hard with that 2x4. I lost feeling in my feet and my hand. Wow. The next week, Farouk and Bradshaw were ready to give it right back to Bubba Ray and Devon when they ran in during an interview segment. The Slick Good! The Acolytes! Ah! Farouk and Bradshaw! The Acolytes beat the Dudleys around with 50 gallon drums, getting their receipt from the prior SmackDown. They were ready to kill us. They hit the set. They beat the crap out of us. Ron Simmons is picking up a 50 gallon drum. Yeah. A shoot. 50 gallon drum and just having his way with the both of us. These are all live round. After the segment was over, both teams shook hands and thanked each other. The Dudley boys had proved they could hang and do business whilst earning the respect of the locker room who were watching on. Now, it wasn't just the men who would dish out receipts, as on an episode of Raw in 2021, Charlotte Flair went one on one with Nia Jax. During the bout, there was a miscommunication and Flair started to lay into Jax. It was mainly during the break, so it wasn't captured on television, to which even some of the announcers were surprised. This is getting 
ugly. Sure enough, Jax had enough and in her own words thought, fuck this and proceeded to give Charlotte a two piece that Rock Flair back a bit. Charlotte Flair does not have an answer for Nia. Nia's gonna mold. After the altercation, they got back on track and finished up the match, but it was definitely intense to say the least. Our next example is one where you can see the wrestler get visibly angered by the stiff shot they received. During a six women tag match on Raw in 2018, Brie Bella would catch Ruby Riot square in the face. And a double team is, oh! And Brie appeared to apologize, but as could be seen from Riot's reaction, she only had one thing on her mind, and that was to give Brie her receipt. And this would come as a result of a stiff kick to the shoulder. It's been a non-factor since the early oh! goings of the match. We have a celebrity entrant up next, as in 2006, the Jackass crew came into the WWE to promote their latest movie. It was scripted that Umaga would come in the ring and beat them down on an episode of Raw. Umaga delivered his usual stiff shots, as he would with any wrestler, but things turned bad due to Steve-O's lack of awareness to sell the move properly. He would end up laughing at his co-star Chris Pontius, but Umaga felt disrespected because he wasn't selling his beat down. Umaga came back in the ring to deliver a brutal splash from the top rope. I don't know that I have to play dead, so I keep moving around. I'm like, oh, and like, he's not done beating me up. However, Steve-O continued to move around instead of appearing knocked out, to which Umaga then beat Steve-O into a blackout with an incredibly stiff elbow. Oh! As we've just seen, celebrities in wrestling can be hit or miss. Johnny Knoxville will have been hoping he fared better than his fellow cast member Steve-O during his WWE run, which began when Knoxville entered the Royal Rumble match in 2022. However, things started with a rough exchange initiated by Knoxville. AJ Styles gave Knoxville one free shot, to which Johnny responded with a clubbing forearm. <laughs> that was. Unlike with Steve and Umaga, this was all good fun, but Knoxville was still owed a receipt. He told Styles to bring it, and the phenomenal one obliged, firing back with a snug clothesline. He said bring it, and Styles, oh my goodness! Knoxville then ate a frog splash from Montez Ford, and was eventually eliminated by rival Sami Zayn, who in turn was thrown out by Styles. Next, we have an example of someone picking up the receipt for someone else, and this occurred during the 2019 Hall of Fame ceremony. As whilst Bret Hart and Natalia were giving their acceptance speech for the Hart Foundation, a fan would run through the crowd and grab Brett from behind, thus tackling the hitman and Natalia to the ground. <laughs> The fan would be immediately physically restrained by numerous wrestlers who were sitting at ringside. However, one superstar took it one step further, as with the fan being rushed away from the scene, Dash Wilder would swoop in delivering a stiff right hand to the fan, which sent him to the floor. <laughs> traditional receipt occurs when a wrestler accidentally cracks his opponent stiff in the jaw and they can expect something as hard right back. But our next case is defined as if a wrestler inflicts brain damage upon their opponent and leaves them permanently blind in one eye, the opponent is therefore within their right to attempt to murder them. At Living Dangerously 2000, Vic Grimes, per New Jack's telling of the story, had to be dragged into executing the agreed upon stereo balcony dive spot and he fell harder and faster right on the top of Jack's cranium. New Jack missed a month of action despite requiring far longer to recuperate. The receipt took place after New Jack and Grimes had already cooperated through a match at Hardcore Heaven later that year. A couple years later at XBW Freefall, the two competed in a match where New Jack missed a fairly obvious target, that being about 100 tables, and sent Grimes directly onto the apron from about 40 feet. Absolutely ridiculous. I wanted him to hit the floor, I just didn't throw him hard enough. I was trying to throw his ass to the floor. No, please don't! Now that's not the only case of New Jack taking it a bit too far in the ring. Back in 2003, New Jack wrestled Puerto Rican journeyman, wrestler Gypsy Joe on an independent show. During the match, New Jack began to first get annoyed due to Gypsy Joe no-selling the original gangster's offense. And Gypsy Joe would not sell nothing that I gave him. However, New Jack was made to eat a potato after receiving a headbutt to the nose. And this coupled with Joe's no-selling was enough for New Jack to lay down one of the most vicious real-life beatings ever seen in a wrestling match. First came the initial receipt in the form of an elbow and the beating kept going, spreading to the outside of the ring and into the crowd. New Jack would rain down vicious weapon shots one after the other as the fans watched on in horror, with some even trying to make New Jack stop the assault. I beat him and I beat him and I stomped him. And I wrapped ball right around his head and snatched it off and big old part, piece of hair in it. And I took a baseball bat and pinged him across the top of his head and beat him. And then everybody in the audience was calling me the N word and I was putting their whooping on Joe like it wasn't gonna be no tomorrow. The match eventually finished in a no contest 
and New Jack would later be arrested and charged with assault with a weapon. New Jack was also up to his old ways during a match for a Florida independent promotion in October 2004. New Jack's opponent was a green wrestler named Hunter Red. The two immediately got off on the wrong foot when Red refused to talk over the match with Jack backstage. Then once the bout began, Hunter Red began laying into the original gangster, nailing him with two stiff potatoes before trying to manhandle New Jack. Jack responded by pulling out a blade from his pocket and driving it directly into Hunter Red's body nine times. I grabbed the rope and I pulled the knife out and started stabbing it. I stuck him like nine times. The few fans in the audience reacted in complete horror. New Jack had to be pulled away from his opponent by the promoter. The emergency services were quickly called, with Hunter Red being taken out on a stretcher while New Jack was arrested. New Jack was charged with aggravated battery and faced up to 15 years in prison. However, he was given a lifeline by the victim of his assault, Hunter Red. Red agreed to drop the charges provided he and New Jack turned the incident into an angle and toured around the Florida independent circuit, wrestling matches against one another. New Jack agreed provided Hunter Red dropped the charges first. Once Red did so, Jack left Florida and never spoke to Hunter Red again. He went and dropped the charges. I went home. Back in 2004, Rene Dupree was the travel partner to Hardcore Holly and Billy Gunn, but he made the grave mistake of crossing Holly when he violated some rules by driving a car in Holly's name. Holly had to go to court after receiving a violating ticket and decided to take out his anger on Dupree. So on a house show, Holly and Charlie Haas were set to face Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki in a hardcore rules match. Holly started to shoot on Dupree, which included hitting him with real punches and kicks. He even smacked him with a chair, which made his eye get swollen and beat him backstage later on as well. Well, during the match, right, I fed for his comeback and he lit me up right in the eye, right? And as soon as he did, yeah. my eyes swelled up like right I away. remember how big it got. He so put a right. wall up on you, man, not just in the match, but afterward. I was like, you know, he's going to kill you. Uh, he attacked yeah. you from behind. You couldn't even defend yourself. And it was just, right. it was crazy. Booker T appeared on the Steve Austin show and recollected the time that he received a well-deserved boot to the nose, courtesy of Stone Cold. During the conversation, the former world champion talked about Booker accidentally tuning Steve during a match. Steve divulged that he's usually patient about doing out receipts for stiff shots, but the rattlesnake could not wait to strike back. The receipt I remember getting back was a, a, a stomp uh, right to the face uh, when I was laying down on the ground. And it was a stiff shot right to the nose. I felt like I deserved that. Sometimes a match can also break down from wrestlers botching, just simply stiffing each other or both. And with a few receipts sprinkled on top. All of this describes the match Big E and Titus O'Neil had on an episode of SmackDown in May 2014. The match first began to fall apart when the two wrestlers botched a clothesline to the outside. We're going to find out how bland Big E is when he takes on Barrett Sunday. And this botch appeared to have angered Titus, who then started to become heavy handed when throwing Big E around on the outside. This would be top off by Titus dropping his opponent on their head with E landing neck first on the floor. From there, Titus would paintbrush Big E with saps, with O'Neill eventually getting himself disqualified due to failing to break on the referee's five count. But it was after the bell that Big E would hand out the receipt by smashing Titus in the face. The assault would continue to the outside as Big E's frustration continued to grow on account of Titus botching by falling over twice. Eventually, Big E stood over Titus in the ring, following a true train wreck of a match. Receipts can sometimes be given out multiple times as wrestlers look to continue to get their revenge on their opponent. This was what happened during Scott Hall and Kevin Ash's tag team feud with the Nasty Boys in 1996. The first beating took place before the November 18th Monday Nitro, as Hall and Nash attacked the Nasties with chairs. The aftermath was shown at the start of Nitro, with stills being shown later in the broadcast. The outsiders didn't hold back in taking out knobs and sags. Sags in particular would be on the end of a vicious chair shot, which ended up hurting his already injured neck. This fueled the fire when it came to the two teams feud as the Nasty Boys had previously been forced to take pay cuts due to WCW's dwindling business. But since then, Hall and Nash had arrived on the scene, each earning upwards of $750,000 per year. Two backstage altercations and a stiff back and forth house show match later, and the two teams collided again at the World War III pay-per-view in a tag match, which also involved Meng and Barbarian, with Hall having lost a tooth in their previous live event brawl, and Nob sporting a bandage covering up a cut from the same match which would be reopened as the teams clashed again here. All four men would go right at it from the start, and it remained a hard-hitting encounter throughout. I was gonna fucking, I mean, I was gonna kill him. 
and there's something personal going on. The Outsiders came out on top as winners, while the Nasty Boys not only lost the match, but also their jobs as a result of their heat with Hall and Nash. Next, we have a receipt that was two and a half years in the making. It all started with the NWO's parody of the Four Horsemen from WCW Monday Nitro in 1997. Arn Anderson and his wife were unhappy with Kevin Nash's impression of Double A. They took Nash making fun of Arn's drinking habits as a mean-spirited personal attack. The Horsemen were meant to get their revenge on the same night of the parody. However, plans changed. Then once the Four Brawl War Games pay-per-view came around, the Horsemen were decisively beaten by the NWO. And with Arn Anderson having retired from the ring earlier that year, it appeared as though the Enforcer wasn't going to get any form of payback on Nash. That was until January 2000, when Anderson made a run in during Nash's match against Bret Hart on Nitro. When Nash was outside the ring, Arn ran down and attacked Kev from behind with a lead pipe. Kev! On would say that the pipe shot was not a receipt for the parody and was instead merely an accidental potato. I don't have to address something from behind with a lead pipe. It's not the way I operate. So if, if he got potatoed, it was purely accidental, which I apologized to him that night. But Kevin Ash disagrees. He hit me with a wrench in Florence. <laughs> You talking about a receipt? <laughs> Lightning bolt shot out of my ass. Either way, it was the first time Arn was able to get physical with Nash after the parody, even if it occurred during a different storyline a few years later. A more recent example of a receipt in wrestling came about following the men's War Games match at Survivor Series 2022, where the Bloodline took on Drew McIntyre, the Brawling Brutes, and Kevin Owens. During the match, Owens slapped Roman Reigns hard in the face. The Saps connection made a wicked sound. <laughs> and led to a subsequent slugfest. Roman had a bruise under his left eye afterward and suffered an eardrum injury, which may have been a result of Owen's slap. Regardless, Reigns was said to have been legitimately upset with Kevin after the match. However, the tribal chief opted against handing out Owens' receipt during the War Games match. Reigns instead waited until their next encounter on the final SmackDown of 2022, where Roman teamed with Sami Zayn to face Owens and John Cena. During the bout, Roman gave Owens a stiff lariat, sending KO straight to the mat. Cena's reaction on the apron said it all. Roman with a it was one hell of a shot by the head of the table, but it was Owens who had the last laugh when it came to the match, as it was he and Cena that got the victory. A receipt on its own is bad enough, but as we've seen earlier, a receipt at the hands of an unprotected steel chair shot is the stuff of nightmares. A receipt of this nature occurred during the Raw 5 on 5 elimination match at Survivor Series 2004. In the match, Maven was taken to the back due to injury. When he returned, he went straight for Snitsky. Maven hit a jumping elbow, which hit Snitsky square in the eye. <laughs> This cut Snitsky open and left him with a nasty gash, with blood dripping down his face onto his chest. Since Snitsky was booked to get himself disqualified by hitting Maven with a chair, it was important for Maven to lay it in so that Snitsky had a suitable reason to get his revenge. And Snitsky responded with a thunderous chair shot. <laughs> Snitsky gave out more chair shots to Chris Jericho and Randy Orton. After this, he walked to the back with blood still pouring from his eye. This was Maven and Snitsky's only ever pay-per-view main event, but you have to give them credit as their receipt exchange helped add to the match. All I did was give his face a tiny bit more care. And if he did give me a little bit of, of, of an extra receipt in that, I had it. A blast from a steel chair was the receipt in our last entry, but our next receipt is the result of a hard chair shot. Occurring on the first SmackDown of 2003, Paul Heyman and Big Show cut a promo calling out Brock Lesnar, who then appeared on stage only to be attacked from behind by Matt Hardy wielding a chair. <laughs> The chair shot busted Brock wide open with the back of his head completely covered in blood. Lesnar was quick to get his revenge though and it came as a result of a vicious clothesline. Hardy and Lesnar then wrestled later in the night. Lesnar refused medical attention and didn't even put on his wrestling gear for the match. Brock gave Matt a merciless beating in a highly entertaining squash. Hardy's follower Shannon Moore also received the pummeling, being hit with an epic F5. Hardy was also given an F5 which earned Brock the victory. Lesnar came across like a tough as nails, unstoppable monster, in no small part thanks to Hardy and Shannon Moore who made the next big thing look like a million bucks. As we've just seen here, Brock Lesnar was never shy in the ring and if you stiffed him in the ring, he would let you know about it. One occasion, was at the 2018 Royal Rumble, where he dished out a receipt to Braun Strowman after he kneed Brock hard in the face. Lesnar responded with a solid right hand while telling the monster among men to slow the fuck down. Strowman, that clubby. Oh, oh wow. A knee to the jaw. Lord. A knee to the jaw. He caught Lesnar. Good. A knee to the jaw. Yeah, caught Brock. Got him back. But this wasn't the only time Brock delivered a receipt mid-match. During his bout with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 31, Reigns would deliver some stiff knee shots to Lesnar, which resulted in Brock getting legitimately pissed. He ended up slapping the snot out of Roman for the entire world to see. Watch this. Oh. Lesnar then followed that up with a ridiculously stiff clothesline, which sent Reigns flying out of the ring. Oh. 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 
Eddie Guerrero had been unhappy due to what happened in the ring on an episode of SmackDown in 2004. Guerrero would be beaten down by Kurt Angle's henchmen at the time, Mark Shindrak and Luther Reigns. Once Eddie got backstage, he would take his frustration out on Angle by saying how Kurt tried to hurt him, despite Angle barely having touched Eddie. This led to a backstage altercation, which Angle explained on his podcast. Eddie was pissed and he got my face and he's yelling and he's spitting. So I pushed him. He tried to double leg me and I got him in a front face lock and started choking him out and Big Show broke it up. John Bradshaw Layfield goes to Eddie and says, why would you double leg an Olympic gold medalist? And Eddie says, because I'm freaking stupid. Just like Eddie would blow up backstage following his match, Big Show would do the same following a match with Chris Jericho and Raw in September 1999. Y2J would write in his second book that Show was so mad at Jericho's poor attempt to give him a short arm scissors. Just look at that execution. It must have definitely been way down on the list of 1,004 holds. Show felt that the Cruiserweight shouldn't be applying holds to a man of his size. And Jericho's bitch that before he applied the hold probably wouldn't have helped matters. Needless to say, Big Show was pissed and he wanted to kill Chris. After the match, Show then threw some up around backstage in anger and even punched out a car stereo. Show also threatened to pick Jericho up and use him as a Q-tip. In another incident involving Big Show, he and Kofi Kingston locked up in 2009 and Kofi hit a jump kick to the jaw of the Big Show, which he didn't appreciate at all. You know, in our business, this ain't called a receipt. You bought that kick, let me give you the receipt with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big Show kept that in mind for later in the match, where he would deliver a thunderous sap to Kofi's chest on the announce table. As the King would say, it sounded like a gunshot. <laughs> Chest just caved in. Sound like a gunshot. Kofi later joked in his podcast that this slap is the reason why his chest is now looking sunken in. It's what buyer's remorse, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I look in the mirror. Don't let me pass the sternum onto the kids. The final moment comes from the 2005 Royal Rumble. Daniel Puder was a 2004 Tough Enough winner, and part of his rise to victory came on an episode of SmackDown where he challenged Kurt Angle to an amateur style match. Putting his MMA experience to use, Puder caught Angle in a Kimura, a hole that would have broken the former WWE champion's arm if referee Jimmy Corderas hadn't fast counted Puder's shoulders to the mat. As a receipt for this, after appearing in the 2005 Royal Rumble, Puder was subjected to very stiff shots from Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, and Hardcore Holly humiliating him in front of a worldwide audience before his elimination. I had no clue what they were going to do. They treated me like crap and uh, very disrespectful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video on 10 resting secrets exposed on camera. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.